This is the sixth revision video in a series about the GCSE chemistry topic of chemical analysis. You may also find it useful for inorganic A-level chemistry since these three tests are still examined in year 12, although we don't discuss the use of ammonia to confirm the halide tests. By the end of this video, you should be able to recall the tests for sulfate ions, halide ions and carbonate ions, including what the positive result would be that you would observe for each one of those. And also you should be able to represent these reactions with balanced symbol equations and with ionic equations. So for my sulfate test, I've got two test tubes here, each containing a blue copper based compound. And I'm going to test these and see which one contains sulfate ions. So firstly, I have some hydrochloric acid. And the purpose of the acid is to remove other anions, which would give me a false positive test. So lots of acids would work, um, but the crucial thing is that I can't use sulfuric acid, because obviously if I did, I would be introducing sulfate ions into my test. So to start with, I'm going to add a little bit of hydrochloric acid to each tube. And now I'm going to add some barium chloride. And the barium chloride, if there are sulfate ions present, then the barium ions will join up with those sulfate ions to make barium sulfate, which is a white insoluble precipitate. So I'm going to see the solution um, produce this white precipitate and go slightly cloudy. So if I add some to this tube, not a lot happening, no sulfate ions there. But if I add some to this tube, then I can see that white precipitate forming. And, you know, the tube has still got a slightly blue colour because there is still copper sulphate in there, but the white solid has formed and has changed the colour. So the test is to add acid, usually hydrochloric acid, followed by barium chloride solution. And you get a positive result if there are sulphate ions of a white precipitate forming. And that white precipitate is barium sulphate. We can represent this process with a symbol equation. So here, barium chloride reacts with copper sulphate. And we know that barium is in group 2 and chlorine is in group 7. So they form a compound in a 2 to 1 ratio. And the barium chloride reacts with the copper sulphate to form the barium sulphate precipitate. And you can see it's a precipitate here because it has an S state symbol standing for solid. And that precipitate is white, as you saw in the video. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be copper sulphate. It could be any sulphate. So we can use an ionic equation instead, which doesn't have any spectator ions, so it doesn't include the copper in it at all. So here we have Ba2+, plus because it's in group 2, and the sulphate ion, and they join together to make that insoluble white barium sulphate precipitate. So for this next test, I'm testing for halide ions, and remember that halides are ions that are produced from elements that are in group 7. So here we're looking at chloride ions and bromide ions and iodide ions. We can't use this test for fluoride ions because it's a test that makes a precipitate that's a silver halide and silver fluoride is actually soluble, so it doesn't make a precipitate. So again, this is a two-part test. We're going to start out and we add some nitric acid and the nitric acid is in there to remove um, other negative ions that could give us a false positive. So we put a little bit of nitric acid into each tube so any carbonates that are in there will react and uh, disappear. And then to those, we're going to add some silver nitrate. So, um, for instance, if we have a solution that contains um, sodium chloride, then um, the silver ions will react with chloride ions and produce silver chloride, and we're going to see a precipitate. So, a little bit of silver nitrate to each tube. And here they are in order. So the first tube contains um, sodium chloride, or did contain sodium chloride, and it now has, um, this is a white silver chloride precipitate. And then my second um, tube with the cream precipitate, that one is um, containing bromide ions. So this is a silver bromide precipitate. And finally, I've got my iodide ions. So you can see as we go, we go white and then cream, and then sort of a pale yellow. So those are the results for my halide test. So the test is firstly to add nitric acid. We can't use hydrochloric acid because that would add chloride ions, and we can't use sulfuric acid because that would add sulphate ions, which would give us a false positive test. Then you add silver nitrate solution, and if there are chloride ions present, you get a white silver chloride precipitate. If there are bromide ions, you get a cream silver bromide precipitate. 
and if there are iodide ions present you get a pale yellow silver iodide precipitate. There isn't a positive test for fluoride ions because silver fluoride is soluble. Again we can represent these reactions with either a balanced symbol equation or an ionic equation depending on whether or not we want to include those spectator ions. Here I've used sodium chloride as a source of chloride ions and we basically see a double displacement. So the silver and the sodium swap places to make that silver chloride precipitate. Again here you see the state symbol S because it's a solid and that precipitate is white. And the reaction also makes some sodium nitrate which remains in solution. We can also write an ionic equation that just contains the ions involved in making the precipitate. So here's the ionic equation for making silver chloride which we've said is white and then silver bromide which we said is cream and silver iodide which we've said is that pale yellow colour. And we do have the same form of ionic equation for silver fluoride but the silver fluoride of course doesn't make a precipitate because silver fluoride is soluble. So this is aqueous. This final test is to look for carbonate ions and the first part of the test is to decompose the carbonate using acid. So this white powder here is calcium carbonate and to that we're going to add some hydrochloric acid and they will react together to make carbon dioxide and a salt. And we can then prove that the gas is carbon dioxide using this lime water here in the same gas test that we used in the third video in the series. We bubble the gas through the lime water, aqueous calcium hydroxide, and as you can see at the moment, it's colourless and transparent, but in the presence of carbon dioxide, it will make a white precipitate and turn cloudy. So I have my delivery tube right down in the lime water here to add as much gas to the lime water as possible. And I'm using a bung and delivery tube to transfer the gas from one tube to the other. And this is a bit fiddly to do without a partner. So the acid goes in, the bung goes on, and you can see the lime water there starting to bubble and slowly but surely it starts to turn translucent as that white precipitate forms. Again, I can represent the two parts of this process using symbol equations. So I start off with my carbonate, and in the video I used calcium carbonate. That will react with an acid to make a salt, water, and carbon dioxide, which you should know about from unit four, the chemical changes unit. Now, in order to prove that that gas is carbon dioxide and not something else, I can then react it with lime water, which as we said in the video, is aqueous calcium hydroxide. And when that carbon dioxide reacts with the lime water, it makes a calcium carbonate precipitate, which turns the lime water white or milky. Just to be clear, this is always calcium carbonate. The calcium has come from the lime water. It's just a coincidence that this is actually the carbonate I started with. So if I'd started with magnesium carbonate, I'd still be making calcium carbonate in this second part of the process. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you're finding this series of chemical analysis videos useful in preparing for your GCSE chemistry exams. If you did find this one useful, let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE chemistry videos coming soon.